Mendel also worked by looking at two traits at a time. Not only monohybrid crosses, but to make things a little bit more complicated, dihybrid crosses, observing two characters at once. And there was a purpose for this. He wanted to see, do these characters segregate from each other together or apart, separately from each other? So in this case, we have our parent generation, but we're looking at two different dominant recessive phenotype relations. So we've got round and we've got yellow being the dominant form and green and wrinkled being the recessive form. So he, we have two types of gametes that could be formed from these true breeding parents in which one parent could only form round dominant yellow dominant gametes and the other parent could only form green and wrinkled gamete information. When those two come together to form the F1 generation, we have an individual that is heterozygous at both loci, both locations. So all of them will have the dominant characteristic, round and yellow, but will have the heterozygous genotype for that trait. So if gametes indeed assort independently from one another, you would expect that there could be four different types of gametes from the heterozygous F1 progeny. And in this case, I would figure this out by distributing the gametes. So think about when you need to distribute in an equation, say you have an A outside and a two and a three inside, and you go well, two A and three A, and we distribute like that. We can do the same thing to be sure of what gametes we're going to put on our giant Punnett square. So we'll take the big R and distribute it with the big Y. So the first gamete is big R, big Y. And then we can take the big R and stick it with the little Y. So we have a big R, little Y. And then we can distribute the Y, I mean the R gamete, so we have a little r, little r gamete to the big Y, and then the little r gamete to the little Y, and that's how we'll come up with four um, gametes that are distinct from each other. In order to figure out the F2, we have to do a larger Punnett square. So let's take a look at how that works out. We have individual assortment of our chromosomes into gametes, then the progeny that we should expect to get, which are the ratios that Mendel indeed found, would give us the big R and big Y being brought together with a big R and a big Y can only give us two big R's and two big Y's. The next square over, we have the big R and big Y coming together with a big R and a little Y. We have big R, big R, big Y, little Y, so on and so forth. We move through the Punnett square, filling in the slots, and eventually we work our way through there and discover that we have nine out of 16 being the dominant form, and we have three out of 16 being one of the heterozygous forms, and then we have three out of 16 being the other heterozygous form, and finally we have one being purely recessive at both traits. So this brings us a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. We could go into a lot of detail about the genotypic ratio, but that's not really the point here. Mendel would breed thousands of pea plants, so the numbers that he actually got were up in the thousands, and he, we could, he would count them up and say there were 9,000 of these and 3,000 of those and 3,000 of those and 1,000 of those. Of course, the numbers didn't land right on the money, but those were the ratios that he he achieved. So from the data that he obtained, he not only supported his suggestion that homologous chromosomes or traits for a different character segregate from each other that we saw in the monohybrid crosses, he also was saying that they do so independently of each other, such that the seed shape of round and wrinkled segregates separately or independently than the seed color 
yellow and green. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.